Another thing worth noting is to see what I've done here with all the clips. I've renamed every single clip, every single video clip. I've also renamed for audio clips as well. So the reason I've done that is so you can quickly see an overview of all of the clips and know straight away which shot you were looking for. So for example I wanted for phone cutaway, I know straight away here because I've renamed it. Okay, so that's why it's important to go through all of your footage at the beginning before you start editing your sequence. A, to get an overall view or overall sense of your footage you've shot and also so you can go through and rename all of your footage so you can quickly know where to find your footage. Again, you can quickly rename your footage just by clicking like, uh, clicking once on the name and then as you can see it's got the blue highlight and you can just start, start typing what you want it to be called and what I usually do when naming for project is I usually name it by the scene first and then I usually do the setup and then I usually do the take so give it a shot description so you know what happens inside that shot for example it's a phone call and also it is so say you have multiple shots of the same thing then it's also good to uh, give it a shot angle. So for example you've done a wide shot of someone walking in and a medium shot of someone walking in so you know those two shots have the same thing happens but then you want to start off with a wide shot and then eventually cut to the medium shot you know which shots to go to. It's also worth renaming your files because when it comes to syncing up your footage you can then tell which video clip relates to which audio clip so then rather than having to sift through say like 30 audio clips to find that specific scene or take that relates to your video clip because you've logged it all beforehand or which clip relates to that video clip it saves a lot of time in the long run so next I'm going to show you how to preview your clip and then how to bring it into the sequence. So for starters, let's try and find... So it's always good to start off uh, with a wide, like the wider shot to switch to the icon view and then that way you can see through the thumbnails which shot is the wider shot okay so I mean I'm gonna start because I know the guy here is the first person to speak in the scene so I, I'm gonna get the widest shot possible of him which is this shot which is a medium shot and I'm gonna find the starting point just before he starts speaking So you can press uh, the spacebar to be able to play your clip back. You can press it again to stop and make sure you've got the source window selected as you're previewing your clip. And then wait for a bit where the director shouts action and then you want to set an in point which you can do with the letter I and now you want to set the out point which you can use by pressing the letter O and now you can drag the video clip onto the sequence but one thing also worth noting is you can just drag the video only if you want or drag the audio only so you can see the difference by 
see there you've got for video and audio if you were to undo by control Z and then if you want to just a video you can just drag a video and as you can see you just got for video and then you can do the same for the audio and also see what I'm doing here is that I'm dragging it onto V1 and A1 that is because you want V1 typically for your general cut for your actual footage and then A1 in the long run you want A1 to be your final audio your final like dialogue so A1 is usually left for dialogue whereas A2 can be used for like music or like sound effects so what you want to do with the video and the audio tracks is to leave each track designated for each type of clip okay so I'm going to drag both the video and the audio into the sequence so what it does when you drag the video and the audio into the sequence it then creates a sequence that matches your video settings so now let's find the point when the doctor, the guy he's talking to start speaking and again I'm going to try and find the widest shot possible for him which is this shot here and then I'm going to find a point when the doctor starts speaking okay so again I'm setting for in and out points so I'm going to now find a point when he stops talking and now I'm going to drag it into the sequence and then I'm making sure when I'm dragging it into the sequence I'm snapping it to the end of the first clip okay but another thing that Premiere does by default is to uh, as you can see it snaps it right to the end of the clip but now if you wanted to um, be a bit more precise in you know, where you drop the clip say for example if you wanted to drop it there not actually snap it to there uh, you can press the letter S and what that does is switches off a thing called snap so now if you were to drag it to the end of the first clip it doesn't automatically snap to your previous clip so now if I was to press S again you can see now it snaps so yeah so if you ever find Premiere doesn't automatically lock onto the previous clip then that is what you need to do you need to press S to switch on snap so now I've noticed that the dialogue I've noticed I need to bring the second clip in slightly later so the different ways I can do that is I can either drag the clip like that and again you can see it's snapping to the playhead which is the blue indicator here or what I can do is I can use a ripple edit tool to then I can use the ripple edit tool so it comes in slightly later so the clip itself is still playing straight after the first clip now if I was to use the selection tool and just drag it like that you can notice it leaves a gap and then so that way if you were to play it it actually just goes to black and then plays the clip whereas if I use a ripple tool you can go to the point in the clip you want to, for it to start at and then you can still have it automatically lock onto the previous clip or another way you can do that is you can use the razor tool and you can go to the point where you want the clip to begin and and then split the clip into two uh, select that part of the clip and then press delete and then press delete again 
so that way it will cut slightly later into the shot.